Though he may have started out life as a Spider-Man villain, there's no denying the synonymy Wilson Fisk, the self-anointed kingpin of crime, shares with Daredevil. Since being inserted into Daredevil's comics during Frank Miller's critically lauded stint on the character, Kingpin has made it his life's mission to f*** with Matt Murdock, a motivation best exemplified by Miller and artist Dave Masuchelli's equally revered graphic novel, Born Again. It's an obsession that transcends Miller's own run, however, and, barring perhaps Batman and the Joker, it's difficult to think of a rivalry as mythic as the one shared between Matt Murdock and Wilson Fisk. That in itself has presented a big challenge to writers, and while Hornhead's life has always been a bit of a punching bag, the stuff Kingpin has done in his long and storied career sits among the most abject schemes in the superhero genre. With that in mind, I'm Yoon from What Culture Comics, and here are the eight worst things Kingpin has ever done to Daredevil. Number eight, he sent a thug to break Ben Urich's fingers. Ben Urich is one of Marvel's best supporting characters, but like the famous Devil of Hell's Kitchen, he's not had an easy life. A reporter for the Daily Bugle and one of their few reputable investigative journalists, Eric established himself as one of Daredevil's most trusted allies and as a real threat to Fisk's interests. In Born Again, a despondent Murdoch confides in Eric to expose Fisk's bid to terrorize Hell's Kitchen. In response, Kingpin sends one of his own enforcers, the terrifyingly creepy Nurse Lois, to break Eric's fingers, which must have been awkward, seeing as how Eric needed those to, you know, type with. Then, as Eric is about to make a break in his case, the same Lois murders his only lead, placing the phone in full range so he could hear every excruciating detail. Daredevil might be the man without fear, but Eric is the unsung hero of his story. He's just as brave, and while his running with one of Kingpin's goons wouldn't deter him from writing his expose, it did make for a chastening encounter. Number seven, he ruined Daredevil's life. Born Again is all about Kingpin's favorite pastime, beating down on Matt Murdock. When a down on her luck Karen Page resorts to selling Daredevil's secret identity to fund the debilitating drug habit, word soon spreads to Fisk. The Kingpin embarks on a campaign to psychologically, physically, and monetarily destroy Matt Murdock. He freezes the lawyer's accounts, evicts him from his home, and proceeds to destroy his temporary flat when he has all but nothing left, leaving only the tattered rags of a discarded Daredevil costume to inform Murdoch he knows of his double life. It's a story all about resurrection, and in battling through the fires of Hell's Kitchen, Murdoch emerges reborn, revitalized, and more determined than ever before. Number six, he encouraged a rivalry that killed Elektra. The death of Elektra made for one of the most iconic Marvel sequences of the 20th century, and while it was Bullseye who ultimately did the deed, there's no ignoring Kingpin's role in the assassin's death. From the very start of Miller's run, Bullseye and Elektra were Kingpin's two most trusted assassins, an aspect of the Paris dichotomous relationship that would foster a particularly lethal kind of resentment. Bullseye was never able to touch Elektra, fell repeatedly to complete Fisk's orders, and played the part of the comic relief for much of Miller's earlier stories. That all changed when he challenged Elektra to a duel to prove who would become the Kingpin's lead assassin, and with the shock outcome leading to her death, Fisk unwittingly contributed to one of the most traumatic episodes in Matt Murdock's life. Number five, he sent a failed super soldier to terrorize Hell's Kitchen. When Professor Erskine passed away during the experiment that turned Steve Rogers into Captain America, the super soldier serum died with him. In subsequent decades, the US government attempted to recreate the super soldier project to no avail, conjuring unstable assassins, aberrant clones, and villains of their own making each time they tried to make another Rogers. One of these failed experiments gave way to Nuke a soldier turned psychopath with a penchant for patriotic drugs. In Born Again, Fisk utilizes his connections with the US Army to mobilize Simpson in Hell's Kitchen, ordering him to terrorize the locale in an effort to draw out Daredevil once and for all. Nuke massacres dozens of civilians in the process, shooting, exploding, and beating a series of bystanders before Daredevil jumps in to put an end to the carnage. The man without fear eventually prevails, but not until dozens of bodies lie in Nuke's wake a fact that spurred the Avengers, Captain America specifically, to intervene. Number four, he tricked Echo into thinking Daredevil killed her father. Echo is easily one of the best and most recent additions to Daredevil's supporting cast, but she wasn't always an ally. A deaf Native American raised by Kingpin from a young age, Echo's real father was murdered by Fisk when she was just a child. She was soon highlighted as a gifted youngster, however, going on to develop skills in the arts, academia, and in combat. Echo wouldn't learn the true events of her father's death, however, until she encountered Daredevil as an adult, 
at which point Fisk had convinced her that it was the devil, not he, that had murdered him. Echo almost kills Daredevil in combat, and certainly would have had it not been for the fact that she, in her civilian identity, had fallen in love with Matt some weeks earlier. Finally equipped with the knowledge of what had really happened, Echo returns to her adopted father and blinds him, ensuring that this particular act didn't go unpunished. Number 3. He revealed Daredevil's identity to the public Brian Bendis' stint on Daredevil will go down as one of the medium's greatest runs, and one of the greatest story arcs to have featured within it was the Murdoch Papers. While the topic of Matt Murdock's double life has become something of a gag for comics writers ever since, Mark Wade and Chris Samney's famous I'm Not Daredevil sweater comes to mind, at the time, Fisk's whistleblowing of Matt's identity as Daredevil was quite the deal. People were sceptical, of course, owing to the fact that Matt Murdock is blind, but Fisk was still able to use his fake file to send Matt's life into chaos. The Hell's Kitchen attorney would later be gravely wounded by an FBI SWAT team attempting to recover the file culminating in his imprisonment with Fisk on Rikers Island and the commencement of Ed Brubaker and Michael Lark's The Devil in Cell Block D. Number 2. He Framed Daredevil for Murder Brian Bendis and Alex Malley's Daredevil may rival the works of Miller and Anna but those who stop with their run are depriving themselves of one equally as compelling. Immediately following the finale of the Murdoch Papers came Ed Brubaker and Michael Lark's The Devil in Cell Block D. If you thought that because Matt was sent to prison the Kingpin would let up, you'd also be wrong, as the resurgent crime boss again set out to make the Hell's Kitchen attorney's life a living hell. During 2008's Dark Reign, an event that saw Norman Osborn handed control of national security with Hammer, Fisk sent Lady Bullseye to murder crooked members of New York's judiciary and to make it look as though Daredevil himself had committed the crime. This nightmare was compounded further when it transpired that Bullseye, like Daredevil, was a lawyer by day granting Murdoch no respite in the fight to clear his name. This was a period where Matt's life only seemed to go from bad to worse. It should come as no surprise, then, that the Kingpin was behind it all. Number 1. He became mayor and made Daredevil a fugitive Sporting a new black and red getup and a career on the other side of the legal aisle as an assistant district attorney, Matt, with his secret identity again intact, has been back to his best. Murdoch, establishing himself as a key force on the New York circuit, introduces an appeal to the Supreme Court which would allow costume crime fighters to testify in court without ever disclosing their true identity. It's even successful, until the Kingpin gets involved. Following on from the calamitous events of Secret Empire, Fisk runs on an anti-vigilante platform to become mayor of New York. His first act is to eliminate Daredevil. While Hell's Kitchen's vigilante manages to escape arrest, he's forced to become a fugitive in a city that once welcomed him. The man without fear might be mounting a comeback. But having decades worth of public service ruined by a politically ambitious mafioso has got to hurt. 